Hello everyone, today we're going to be using Search Kick and Elastic Search again, but this time we're going to be adding a category dropdown. This will allow you to search for stuff like maybe your posts, and it'll work just fine if you don't select anything. But if you want to only grab the posts that are under a movie category, for example, it'll then only return the movies. Maybe you want to just search all the movies in general. You can also do that, and you'll see down here we get some other posts that are tagged under the category of movie uh, but they have like a different title so both of these can be null and it works just fine we'll be using the docker implementation for this which we covered in a previous video i have a link to this in the video description uh, but that'll just allow us to run elastic search in a docker container so that we don't have to manually set it up we've also manually set up elastic search before uh, that video is also on youtube somewhere but to actually do this uh, search field it's pretty simple we're going to just go ahead and cd out of here and we're going to do a Rails new, I'll call it video, the control plus a bunch. And then we'll just pass in a dash J of ES build and a dash C of bootstrap. That part is largely optional. While that's going on, you're gonna to want to start up your Docker uh, application if you're on Windows. And if you're on Linux, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your Docker service is running. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure those things are installed. Same thing for Mac uh, OS, obviously. In our case, because I already have the Docker container running, uh, we can either just restart it or we can, you know, like create a new one. If you're interested in doing that, the video I link in the video description also has a GitHub repo. If you go into that GitHub repository, you scroll down to the readme, it just has the commands that you have to run, which is just this one right here to start up an Elasticsearch container. And then you have to do your post re-index once that's done. But in our case, this is now done. We're going to CD into our video app. I'm going to run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. And then we can go ahead and get started. The overall process here isn't too bad. There are just a couple of annoyances that we do have to get out of the way. First one is we want to come into our gem file, scroll down to the bottom. And in here, what we want to do is add in two gems. One's going to be for search kick and one's going to be for elastic search. If you just add elastic search manually, it'll give you like a version eight as of the time of this recording. But I'm pretty sure the implementation is going to want it to be version seven point whatever uh, for this to work. Otherwise, you'll get some strange errors because of how the versioning for elastic search right now seems to be. That seems a little bit wonky. But I'm going to go ahead and run a bundle install here to install both of these gems. Once that's done, we can then, uh, you know, generate our models and stuff that we have to for this application. And for that, we're going to be doing uh, a couple migrations. So we're going to start with a Rails G scaffold. We'll call it post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text. We can go ahead and run that. Then we can generate a Rails G scaffold for the category and give each one a name. And that's pretty much it here. And then the last thing we want to do is do a Rails G migration and then we'll say add category to post and we'll give it a category colon references that will allow our post to belong to a category. Once all of that's done, we can then exit out of our uh, terminal real quick and we can come into the DB and the seeds.rb. And in here, we're going to do a couple of migration setups or initial seeds. We're going to create three categories for movies, music and book. Uh, books, I guess. And then we're going to do this 10 times. And then in here, what we're going to do, I'm going to make sure to put the end here because I was missing it. We're going to call post.create. We're going to give it a title of post and then whatever uh, step through the for loop we are, a body with the same content. And then we'll set the category ID to be a random number between one and three so that we can give it a random category. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and save all of this. And then we can come over to our models and our post.rb and in our post.rb we want to make sure that this belongs to a category and that this has search kick enabled on it after we do that we then want to come into our category model so that's going to be right here and in the category model you can already guess we're going to have to say that this has many this has many posts with a dependent destroy just like that now we can go ahead and close out of our post.rb, our category, our seeds, and our gem file. And then we can uh, come into, I guess, our uh, terminal again. And in here, what we want to do is do a Rails G controller, call it search, and give it a index action. That's just for the sake of our sanity. And then we can go ahead and run a bin slash dev to start up our proc file that has our uh, bootstrap and stuff running on it. 
we can now come over to localhost port 3000 and it'll tell us we have to run these migrations so we can run these and now our application is going to work. Of course, we're going to want to come into our config and our routes.rb because we don't want to have to go to that uh, root path all the time. So what we'll do is we'll just say this should be a root for the posts index. And then we want to change this git for the search to be a post to search, which goes to the search controller and the index action. Once that's done, we're pretty much done in our routes. Now, the next step here is going to be to add the ability to create these in our views. So we'll come into our views, our posts and our post form inside of our post form. What we want to do is, I guess, below the body, we'll create another div. Let me hit F11. And in here, what we want to do is just give it a label for the category. We want a form select for the category ID. We want to give it an options for select where we call category.all.map. And then in here we say for each of the categories, we want to map it so that we have the category name. And that is going to be linked to the category ID. And that'll just allow you to select a category for a post when you're creating it. That's just part of our standard, like, you know, belongs to relationship stuff where we have categories we're associating like that. Now, the next thing we want to do is come into our posts and our index.html. And in here, what we want to do is create the search form. Now, we can either create a uh, partial or we can just do a form with. In my case, I'm just going to do this form with. Basically, all we do is we say this has a text field for search and we give it a label as well. We then create another label for our category. Now for the actual category itself, we're going to want to do essentially what it's suggesting here, but we're going to add a little bit extra. It's going to be a form.select for the category with some options for select. Just like the last one, we'll call category.all.map. We'll set this to be the cat. And for each cat, we give the name and the ID. But then at the start, at, we insert at position zero, just a nil, which is where our empty option in our dropdown comes from. So we come over here and we refresh. That's what gives us this empty little box right here if we don't have any categories to begin with. Now, if we stop the server, we can run a Rails DB colon seed, which will seed our database with those categories and those posts we just created. Now, if we run a bin slash dev again and we refresh, we'll have some posts created for us, hopefully, if the application decides to actually refresh, although it looks like it's a little bit stuck right now. Uh, and then while this is running, I guess we can come over to our, uh, we're going to have to come into our posts, right click new file and call this underscore posts.html.erb. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop the server and restart it because it looks like my browser has completely given up on life. Uh, let me do this maybe. Let's come over here, localhost port 3000. That was weird. Uh, so now we have these categories which are perfectly sized. We have the blank option by default and we have the search field. So that's cool. Inside of this post uh, HTML partial, what we want to do is we just want to grab everything inside of here and we want to put it into this post partial so that when we do our, uh, our turbo response, we don't have to refresh. We can just render the post partial. So we'll just say this should render post slash post. Uh, and then we want to pass in the at posts, which are going to be for the posts, oops, posts, colon, at posts, just like that. And then in here, we just have all of these posts being rendered. This then renders the post itself or the post partial and everything moves on just like that. So we can close that. We can close the post partial. And now in our index, we're actually also done. The only thing we really have to deal with now is in our controllers, in our post controller, we're going to want to come down to the bottom because we want to make sure that we are including uh, or permitting the category ID in our form. So when our form gets submitted, it includes that category ID from our dropdown. And then after that, we just want to come into our search controller. We have our index action. And in here, we want to do a couple things because by default, we're going to have that, um, that you know search parameter passed to us. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a search field, which is going to be equal to params.search if it's present. If it's not present, which is this case, we're just going to set it as an asterisk because when we do our, uh, what is it, our post.search, if we just pass in an asterisk, this will then return all of the results. So if like our search field is blank, we return all of the results instead. For me, that's the way that I prefer the, the search bar to work so that if I backspace everything, I can go back to how it was originally. So that's why we're having this null check here. The other thing we want to do is make sure that when our category ID is null, 
if so we check our category id it is equal to params dot category uh, uh, present if we have a category we cast it to an integer and if we don't we just set it to nil and what that allows us to do is when we set our at posts we can check if this category id exists if it does we can do something else we can do something else so the else case here is going to be similar to what we did in the previous video. We just say return post.search. We pass in the search field with the fields for the title and the body. So we're only searching those two. However, if we do have a category ID, what we want to do is we want to say, all right, well, we have to do a post.search for our fields. And we can say our fields might be like our title or body and our category ID. Then after that, what we want to do is we want to include another where and inside of that where clause we can say where the category id equals this category id so if we pass back the category id of two and that's music this will then be two so we do a post.search on the title body and whatever where the uh the id is set to two and of course if this is nil this will be the asterisk and it'll still do this where just fine so after we do all of that we then want to do our turbo respond to we can do down here so we do a respond to do format if our format is html which you know god willing it never will be we can then return the index or render the index otherwise we'll have a turbo response and for that turbo response we once again want to do a render turbo stream we're doing this in the controller because only the person on this page who did the search should see these results if we wanted everyone to see these results we could have it render from like a model somewhere and we could do like a broadcast to like a specific, you know, Redis database or something. We do our turbostream.update. We update the posts. We then say, all right, our partial is going to be the post post partial, just like we have in our index.html. So we're rendering this right here to this target. And these are our locals. So we have to make sure that we include those locals right here. And then once we have that, we make sure that we have enough ends to close all of this off. We can hit save. We can exit out of here. We can come over to our post page and the only thing we really want to do is make sure if we open up a rail c uh, because we have you know recreated this entire uh, database and stuff and i already had our docker container running i'm going to do a post.reindex that'll allow this to be re-indexed and then we can stop the server and run a bin slash dev and again, if you don't have your Docker container running, just head over to this GitHub repo. I'll have a link to it in the video description and just run this command if you have Docker installed and that should work just fine for you. But now we can come over here and we can search for, uh, well, actually let's make a new post. We'll say this should be test case and we'll make it a music post. And then let's create one more. We'll say this is test books case and we'll make this a book post. There we go. So now if we come up here and we search for test, we can hit enter returns the test case and the test books but of course i can uh maybe come in here to the post partial and after the title maybe we want to do a p tag for the category name so that we can see what we're actually getting we search for test we have the music and the book so let's try switching this to the music category and let's try giving ourselves in our index page a submit button so we'll say this should be a form.submit with the word search and a class of btn btn-secondary, which you only need if you're using Bootstrap, of course. So now if we do test with music and hit search, we get that one music result. We can switch this over to book. We get the test books. Of course, we can also do something like test books, set this to blank and search, and it'll still return that. If we search for book, it'll still return it because it's the category. So that's pretty much gonna do it. Uh, I know it's a bit of a shorter tutorial. I say that's like 14 minutes, but hopefully this will uh, give you a working search with filters option using Elasticsearch. I know this is something people have been asking for for a while now, uh, and it is a very nice user experience. Again, I always like it when you have like this no refresh search functionality, it does work a lot better than, uh, you know, having to constantly reload the page and go back and stuff. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful. If you celebrate it, hopefully you had a uh, nice Christmas because today's the 25th and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.